Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make a quiz game with WatchKit with Swift and Xcode. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, this is what we're going to accomplish inside of this tutorial. I have a question and alongside this question, I have a few answers. Now when I click on the correct wrong answer, I will get the text to turn red. And when I click on the correct answer, it'll go over to a new question. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, in order to get started, let's open up Xcode and create a new Xcode project. This will be a, a single view application. In our product name, I am just going to call mine watch quiz game thing, thing. And our language will be set to Swift and our devices will be set to iPhone. If you can come up with a better name, do it. This is a temporary name. Click next and we can create. Now let's make this a bit bigger and head on over to our file up here. You will have a bar and then say file, new, target. And then we are going to set our target equal to an Apple Watch and our Watch Kit app. So this is going to allow us to build an application for the Watch Kit. So now I'll click activate and we want to head on down here to our Watch Kit game thing, Watch Kit app and our WatchKit extension. So these are what we are going to be working with this whole time. So basically the extension holds our interface controller.swift, which is going to control our interface.storyboard. So we can go down here and inside of our interface.storyboard, we just wanna delete these down here. And now we are left with our main, main view controller that we want to use, or WatchKit view controller. So now down here, we want to open up our, uh, actually up here, we want to open up our assistant editor and we want to add a few labels onto our view controller dot, I mean, our inside of our watch kit scene. So we want to add a label. So we'll click and drag a label onto our scene. This will just be right up there. And then we want to add a button. Now this button will be copied and pasted. So we have four buttons total. And as you will see, it also makes the watch kit scene a bit bigger. And this will actually allow for scrollability inside of your application. So now click on your label here and we want to center the text and we want to add some lines just in case our question goes a bit long. So we'll add just four lines. And now we want to right click or control click and drag from that label and over to our interface controller.swift. And we want to call the name of this label uh, just our question label connect and now we want to do the same with our buttons and just right click or control click and drag this will be an outlet and our name of this we'll just call this button one and we can do this for all the buttons so now this will be button two button three and lastly button four now we want to add some actions to these buttons. So anytime they're clicked, we want something to happen. So we can click and drag from that button again, right click or co control click and drag from those buttons again, insert connection type as an action. And we'll just call this button one action or button one action. I will come back as soon as I am done. Make sure your connection type is as an action or else you get something wrong. Connect. All right, so now we have actions set up to each of these buttons. We don't actually have anything happening when these buttons are clicked, but we will do that in just a minute. So now up here, we want to create a structure. Uh, first off, let's close our assistant editor and head on over to our interface controller.swift. And now first thing we want to do is create a structure. And this structure is basically going to hold uh, what our quiz, what our question will look like. So our question is going to hold the question itself the actual answer and the answers that accompany that question. So inside of this structure, we can say, uh, we'll just call this quiz template. And down here in the properties and methods, we want to say var question equals, equals, and this will be equal to a string, open parentheses, close parentheses. Say answer, and this will be equal to an integer open parentheses, close parentheses. And lastly, we will have our variable for answers. And this will be equal to a, a, an array of strings. So in order to do this, you would just say open bracket, close bracket. And inside of those brackets, you would put string and then open parentheses, close parentheses. So now we have all those done. And now if we go down here, we want to create an object off of this structure. So we want to say var uh, quiz object will be equal to 
our quiz template or an array. This will actually be equal to an array of quiz templates. So now we are going to be able to pick one of these templates randomly. So now let's go down here and instead of instead of view to load as you normally see, you will see awake with context. So now down here inside of awake with context, you want to change your quiz object equal to a certain array of quiz templates. So you can say quiz quiz object will now be equal to open open bracket and then we say quiz template and then open parentheses and this is going to give us our question our answer and our answers as you will see now just tab all that in and our question we can just put our question as open quotation mark close quotation mark and we'll just say how old are you question mark and we will have the answer as number two and it's very important that I explain this right now. So our answer will be number one, or it will actually make it number two. And inside of our answers, we can say open bracket, close bracket, open quotation mark, close quotation mark, and just keep doing that until we have it all filled in. So now we have answers, two, and basically two will actually be our third object in our array, as it starts off at zero, one, two, and three. Because it starts at zero, but we have four objects if that makes sense. So now we have answers, we'll just have 3, 8, 16 as my actual age, and 8, or 4. Now down here, uh, if you want to add some more questions, easily you can just do this. You click, you add a comma at the end of this quiz template whole thing that we have right here. So this is an actual question. So this is, everything is compiled inside of this one quiz template. So now you add this comma right after this, enter, click enter, and we're going to add another question by adding quiz template, and then open parentheses, and again, we just need to go through this whole project. I mean, this whole process again of going through the question and clicking, how, what is our question again? We're gonna say, uh, what is the capital of Assyria? Get a little knowledge in here. Our answer will be number number one, and our answers will be equal to open quotation mark, close quotation mark, fill in your array. And we can just put in, I don't know, hello, or this will actually be Nineveh. So Nineveh is the actual capital, I believe. And so Nineveh, hopefully I spelt that right. We'll just add some ridiculous cross things in here. So now we have, I don't know, Nineveh, hello world, good. So now we have two questions in here. Now we want to pick randomly from these questions, and in order to do this, we want to create a function. Now right down here, we're going to say function, and we'll just say pick random, open parentheses, close parentheses, open bracket, close bracket, and inside of this function, we just say quiz, or we're going to create var, and this will be a random number. And this will be equal to arc, or actually this will be equal to random, random like so, percent, and then this is going to be our quiz object dot count. So we're counting the amount of objects, or in this case there would be two objects. So we're counting how many objects are inside of our quiz object. And then we're going to pick randomly from that number. So in order to do this, you would easily just say quiz, quiz object, open parentheses, open, I mean open bracket, close bracket, and this would be either equal to our random number integer that we just created right up here, dot answer. So our, our quiz object, random number, dot answer. Or first of all, we actually want to say button button one dot title or dot set title. Sorry, button one dot set title, and we will set this title equal to our button our quiz object random number dot answer answers actually, and this will be equal to number zero. So we're going to automatically set our first button our first button title equal to our first object that is in our array. So whether it's three or I don't know. So now we can copy and paste this and just change a few numbers around. 
So now we have button one, two, three, three, and four. And then just down here, you would have zero, one, two, and lastly, three. So now if we were actually to build in on this right now, we will have our random number being picked, put inside, or actually we wouldn't have our random number be picked. We wouldn't have anything happening as this function is never being called. So we want this function to call as soon as this op uh, awakes, so we can say pick random. So just type it in there exactly like you see there. So now we can build and run this. Head on over to our iOS simulator, as WatchKit for some reason doesn't open it automatically. And as you will see, we have it built and ran, and it's filling all of our buttons up with the objects array. Now we want to do the same thing with our question. So in order to do this, you would just go down here to pick random, and we can say label, or our question label, will now be equal to our quiz object for our random number. And then we'll say dot and dot question. So we're setting our, or this will be question, question label dot set text. I keep forgetting that this is different. Open parentheses, and then we're going to fill this in as I did before. Quiz object random number dot question. And now if we were to build and run this, we will also get this filled in with our question. Amazing, right? So now we have it built in and what is the capital of our Syria? We don't have anything happening now when we click on these buttons, but we will do that right now. So in order to do this, you would just create a thing called, we'll, we'll, create, we'll create a function. So function, and this will be right, wrong, and open parentheses, close parentheses. And inside of this function, we want to actually say pick, or if, we'll say if, and we want to create a couple variables before we do this. So we can say if, I mean, sorry, go up here and we want to say var, and this will be our number, our number picked, and this will be equal to an integer, an integer, like so. So var number picked equals int, open bracket, open parentheses, close parentheses. Now down here inside of our button one action, we can say, uh, number picked will now be equal to zero. Number picked will be equal to one. And number picked picked will be equal to two. And lastly, on our button for action, we will have number picked will be equal to three. So now we have each of these functions being called, and then as long, also along with these buttons, we'll, we're changing our button number picked to zero, and inside of our right wrong function, we can say if our number picked is equal to our quiz object dot. Uh, actually, this will be also we want to create a fun variable real quick uh, again, and we want to say var, and this will be our real answer and this will be, again be equal to an integer so now we have our real answer equal to an integer and we're also going to set this alongside of uh, inside of our pick random so we could say real answer will be equal to our quiz object dot or open open bracket close bracket random number and then right after the brackets you say dot answer so we're setting our real answer equal to the random answer that we have right there. So if number picked is equal to uh, our real answer, then we want that to happen, or equal equal to, as we are comparing. And then right after that, we can say else. So if it's wrong, then we want other things to happen. And what do we, what do we want to happen? Well, let's actually just change our question label dot set text color so say question label dot set text color and we'll just make it a ui color dot red color so we're just going to set our questions our question label text equal to a red color so now if we were to actually build and run this right now we would have a fairly good functioning uh quiz game actually not right yet go down here to your button one action and inside of these we also want to run our right wrong so just type that inside of all of these actions that we have right here. And this is going to run that function that we created and make sure our question is right. 
And then up here, if our right wrong or our question is right, we want to create pick another random question. So we could say pick random. So if it is correct, we're going to pick random. Now let's build and run this. And now we should have a fully functioning quiz game on a watch, which is just amazing to think about. So now if we were to do this, what is the capital of Assyria? We can click Nineveh, and it's going to pick a random question again. How old are you? 16. It's going to pick that random question. Or if you, what is the capital of Assyria? I don't know. It's going to change the text color to red. And then it's going to give you another chance to just click on Nineveh. And it should build and run a new as there are, oh yeah, the reason it's giving me a lot of duplicates is because it's a random and there's only two questions. So it's only picking between two little questions. So if you want to add more questions, you can easily do this by just doing what I did earlier. Right after here, you want to add a comma, add a comma, and then you say quiz, quiz template, open parentheses, and our question will be, hey, because I'm running out of ideas, our answer will be, number three, and our answers will be equal to, just fill this in real quick. Our answers will be equal to R, F, S, H, because why not? And it looks like I accidentally improperly put this as answer Three. So that should actually just be an integer and not open quotation mark, close quotation marked. So now we can build and run this. And now we will have another question. So we can have what is the capital Syria of Assyria? Uh, Nineveh, Nineveh, how old are you? 16, Nineveh, Let's see if we can get this. All right, there we are. Hey, so, and then we will have this as being this. So there you have it. And oh, one more thing. Uh, when we click, if it is correct, we also want to set our question label.txt equal to a white color. So in right, in right wrong, we want to go down here and say, if it is a real number, we can go down here and say UI color dot white color. So now if we were to build and run this now, uh, if we get a question wrong and we exit and we click the right answer afterwards, it's going to set our text label to a white color. So we can say, I don't know, click on Nineveh, and it goes back to white. That's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more tutorials like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. If you aren't so inclined to actually help out these videos even further, you can head on over to my Patreon page, patreon.com slash architep, and you can get some cool perks out of this as well. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one. My hard drive was literally full before I emptied my trash, and now it has 700 gigabytes free. This is awesome.